Well, it's about time. This video was originally supposed to be for a 10,000 subscriber celebration, but it's a little late for that. But here we are, so don't say I don't keep my promises. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, one may have noticed that every week I released a poll with various kaiju from the Godzilla franchise, where you would vote for your favorite kaiju of that week. The rules were simple. Every non-Godzilla kaiju was up for the running, because let's be honest, if Godzilla was in this, he would have won easily. Also, every incarnation of a kaiju will be included. So, for example, all versions of Mechagodzilla and any other kaiju that has appeared multiple times is its own contestant. So let's start from the bottom and work our way to the top. Also, this competition was made before Singular Point came out, so none of the kaiju from that list will be on here. Number 48, and the least like non-Godzilla kaiju of the entire series is... The Giant Vulture from Ebera Horror of the Deep, 1966. This is not a surprise to anyone. The design is lacking and the fight involving it is nauseously bad with the camera work that even Michael Bay would consider it laughable. This guy wasn't even meant to fight Godzilla. He was originally supposed to fight Kong, but Kong's role was instead given to Godzilla. Hence, this is why this is a Godzilla movie. Man, this monkey cannot catch a break. Number 47, Megalon from Godzilla vs. Megalon, 1973. I was quite shocked to find this guy so low on the list, but I guess I can see him being here due to his silly, almost childish nature. For a giant bug, it's odd that he would be on two legs, unlike some other bug-related kaiju in the franchise. Number 46, Veron from Destroy All Monsters, 1968. A somewhat cool design as a gliding lizard, but the fact that his entire contribution to the franchise is less than 30 seconds, it's no surprise to see him this low on the list. Number 45, Kumanga from Son of Godzilla, 1967, and Godzilla Final Wars 2004. Kumanga is a big spider. Nothing special, but a simple design that works. Number 44, Batra. Adult form from Godzilla vs. Mothra, 1992. Come on, guys, Batra, especially his adult form, doesn't deserve to be this low. I think he's cooler than Mothra, both in design and the actual animatronic, with having more fluidity to its movement. The evil twin to Godzilla that teams up with her to defeat Godzilla. While technically a Godzilla bad guy since he is in a Godzilla movie, it probably would have been better if he had just been in one of Mothra's solo films as a primary antagonist. Number 43, Gabra from All Monsters Attack, 1969. Often considered the worst kaiju in the entire Godzilla franchise, Gabra is ugly, weak, and technically just a representation for some kid's bullies. I don't think he's the worst, because at least he has some unique abilities, and you know he's not a giant vulture. At least Singular Point made him kinda cool, even if it's technically not. Gabara. Number 42, Mogera from Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, 1994. A supposedly superior vision to Super Mecha Godzilla, but with a stiff and boring looking design, the only cool thing about it is the drills for weapons. And that's it. Moving on! Number 41, Ebera from Ebera Horror of the Deep, 1966, and Godzilla Final Wars, 2004. <laughs> You know what's a really cool idea for a kaiju? Those live lobsters you pick out from a live tank at those fancy restaurants. The fights between Godzilla and Ebra go in that direction too, with Ebra being nothing more than a seafood meal served with a side of melted butter. At least the idea of giant insects and arachnids works better, because most people find those things creepy and scary. But I doubt there are many people that suffer from carnobophobia. Number 40. Kamakuras, from Son of Godzilla 1967 and Godzilla Final Wars 2004. <laughs> Similar to Kumanga in the sense that it's just a scaled up version of a real life animal, and while there's nothing too special about it, it gets the job done. Plus it's fun to see how in the two movies it appears in, it basically is there to act as a punching bag for Godzilla. Number 39, Mega Anguirus, from Godzilla vs Mega Anguirus 2000. Continuing the tradition of supersizing insects, however, unlike the two that came before, Mega Aguirus looks like a mutated dragonfly mixed with Godzilla, which makes sense considering it's made up of some of Godzilla's DNA. 
She has some cool abilities like Super Speed, Claws, Stinger, and an Atomic Fireball. Overall, she does fall into the category of perfectly suitable for the story, but she probably has the funniest reaction from any Godzilla enemy or from Godzilla himself. Number 38 Jet Jaguar from Godzilla vs. Megalon, 1973 The growing robot comes in fairly low, which isn't that surprising. I personally have never been a fan of Jet Jaguar, mostly due to how targeted for children it seemed with the bright primary colors and a permanent smile on his face. This robot looked more like a stuffed plushie than a giant mecha ready to do battle with kaiju. Regardless, I can say that I like the redesign in Singular Point much more, although it's still debatable on how much I actually like that version of Jet Jaguar. Number 37 Batra Larvaform from Godzilla vs. Mothra, 1992 The larva form of Mothra, and not much else to add other than it has a beam attack and a massive horn attack instead of Mothra's silk attack. Not much else to say other than I think that the adult form looks way cooler than this one. Number 36 Warbat from Godzilla vs Kong 2021 A giant flying cobra that Kong fights within the Hollow Earth. Not too much to say other than it has a cool roar and that Kong is absolutely brutal with these guys. Number 35 King Caesar from Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla 1974 and Godzilla Final Wars 2004 The Kaiju Poodle Lion himself For the longest time this was the only mammal like Kaiju in the franchise until Manny came along King Caesar is a solid enough looking monster with the unique ability to absorb projectile beam attacks in his eye and then fire them back out of it at his opponents. It was definitely fun seeing Godzilla team up with another kaiju to defeat a stronger opponent. Similar to Mothra, King Caesar even gets his own theme song. Number 34 Baragon from Destroy All Monsters 1968 and Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah Giant Monsters All Out Attack 2001 Baragon contributed nothing but a brief cameo to Destroy All Monsters However, this scrappy little kaiju has arguably the best kaiju fight in Giant Monsters All Out Attack, with a great fight between him and Godzilla. The GMK design is much better looking than the Showa era, plus the behind the scenes of the actress doing Baragon's roars are just adorable. Yeah! Number 33, Methuselah from Godzilla King of the Monsters, 2019. Ah, the monster that everyone thought was going to be Anguirus from the trailers, but this monster is still really cool. Kind of having a dragon and bull look at it with its back being a literal mountain. Too bad we never really get to see him fully in King of the Monsters. Personally, out of all the original kaiju that appeared in the film, Methuselah was my personal favorite. Number 32 Gorgosaurus from Destroy All Monsters 1968 The kangaroo dinosaur that actually played a significant role in Destroy All Monsters. The design is nothing crazy, but it works and it was cool to see another kaiju besides Godzilla or Anguirus actually land some hits on Ghidorah. A simple design for a simple kaiju. Number 31 Ghidorah Showa Era from Ghidorah Three-Headed Monster 1964 Invasion of Astro Monster 1965 Destroy All Monsters 1968 and Godzilla vs. Gigant 1972 the first set of appearances from the three-headed gold dragon that would become Godzilla's nemesis. While he does look admittingly silly compared to some later incarnations of himself, I think we need to recognize that while this may not be people's favorite version, it's arguably the most important since you need to start from somewhere, and the Showa era films are definitely a great place to birth a legendary rival for a legendary monster. Number 30 Super Mecha Godzilla Heisei Era from Godzilla vs Mecha Godzilla 2, 1993. The second incarnation of Mecha Godzilla, and it's built from the aftermath of Godzilla vs King Ghidorah. While out of all the designs of Mecha Godzilla, this one is probably my least favorite, so I can see why he ranked here. Since as far as I know, he's not a lot of people's favorite version of the character, but he's arguably the most powerful due to the fact that he technically is the 
only kaiju to have actually killed Godzilla, and later killed Fire Rodan, which ended up resurrecting Godzilla, granting him the Red Spiral Ray attack. And that in itself deserves some recognition. Number 29. Scylla from Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019. Another one of the original titans made for King of the Monsters. That's just kind of viewed as fine, and I kind of agree. I appreciate that's not just a big spider. In fact, lots of people confuse the scenes with Scylla from the trailer for Kumanga. The design of, of an Ammonite with spider legs is a decent one, with not much else to say about her. Number 28. Skullcrawler from Kong Skull Island 2017 and Godzilla vs. Kong 2021. While technically Skull Island is not a Godzilla film, it does take place in the MonsterVerse, so I'm counting it. Plus, the skull crawlers appear in Godzilla vs. Kong, so HA! I win. The two legged lizards have a cool skull design on their head, and honestly, when I first saw them in the trailer, the big one looked way different than I, than I initially thought. I didn't even realize I was looking at its fake eyes instead of the real ones. And also, their deaths in both movies are brutal. I like these creatures, but I don't feel like there's too much to say other than. I like it! Number 27, Orga from Godzilla 2000, 1999. Similar to many other kaiju with these rankings, there's not a whole lot to say about Orga. The big hands are cool, and death has probably inspired the female Mudos to a certain extent, but other than that, it's fine. Next! Number 26, Male Muto from Godzilla 2014. After a 10 year hiatus, many people were anxious to see what kind of opponent Godzilla would be facing in his second American debut, and the trailers even misled people with the San Diego Comic Con showing a different monster that appeared to be dead. Turns out we got two new opponents for Godzilla, and the first one introduced was the Male Muto. This version differs from the female with it being much smaller and having a pair of wings which grants him flight. And like the female, he also has an EMP ability. The male, while being smaller than the female, is a much bigger challenge for Godzilla, since it's able to outmaneuver him, but it does hold a special place in my heart as it has my favorite death of all time in the entire Godzilla franchise. Number 25. Angiris from Godzilla Raids Again, 1955. Destroy All Monsters, 1968. Godzilla vs. Gigan, 1972. Godzilla vs. Megalong, 1973. And Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, 1974. And Final Wars, 2004. <laughs> Angiris is the very first kaiju that Godzilla ever faced, and ended up starting the trend of kaiju fights. Because of that, Angiris is one of the most important kaiju ever in the franchise. Initially, he started off as Godzilla's enemy, but over the course of the films, became an ally, even detecting the imposter Mechagodzilla, a key kaiju that has been placed in a solid spot, even if it may be lower than I expected. Number 24 and a half, Titanosaurus from Terror of Mechagodzilla, 1975. What if Godzilla had a secret love child with a fish? Well, that's Titanosaurus for you. Aside from the neat coloring, I never really have been a fan of this monster since its unique ability is wind from its tail, which a lot of the flying kaiju already did that, but it doesn't look as weird. Also, every time it's on screen, it's getting its butt kicked by Godzilla, but it does have a neat little roar, I guess. Number 24, Rodan, Legendary Era. Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019. The latest incarnation of Rodan, there's not too much new stuff I can say about him since I talked about him in length on my Why Godzilla King of the Monsters is a Great Godzilla Movie video, so I'll summarize here. In this film, he plays the role of Starscream from the Transformers, switching from sides to whichever is in his best interest. Also, the fact that he's inside a volcano is a nice little nod to his original film. He's got a fun personality and an awesome musical theme composed by Beer McGeary. Number 23. Manda from Destroy All Monsters, 1968. A traditional Japanese dragon design, Manda only makes a brief cameo in Destroy All Monsters, but according to the votes, made a bigger impact than some of the other kaiju that cameoed in this movie, since it's higher on this list than any others. Number 22. Ghidorah, anime trilogy from Godzilla the Planet Eater, 2018. 
This is arguably one of the most controversial monsters in the franchise due to how different it is from the original design. Dubbed the Space Noodle, this version of Ghidorah is a higher dimensional being that takes the place for the most powerful monster in the franchise, and unfortunately was never fully realized due to the film not being very good in nearly every aspect. Number 21. Behemoth from Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019. fan favorite of the new Titans and King of the Monsters, despite having a 20-ish second of screen time, but I understand why everyone loves him. First, because he looks like a woolly mammoth, and everyone loves a good mammoth. Second, out of all the kaiju that have appeared in the Godzilla franchise, only one other guy has been a mammal type kaiju. Overall, it's nice to see something else that isn't just another big reptile or bug. Hopefully, if the Monsterverse continues, we can see Behemoth return in a future film. Number 20. Hedora from Godzilla vs. Hedora 1971 and Godzilla Final Wars 2004. Save the environment plus Godzilla may sound like a weird combo, and it definitely is among some of Godzilla's more wacky films, but the sludge monster Hedora is a unique monster that people either like or feel indifferent to. The monster is made up of sludge and pollution and has two forms, flying and kaiju. Attacks include a brain laser and the leftover Taco Bell spray. One of the more odd kaiju, but one that is still memorable nonetheless. Number 19. Mothra Heisei Era from Godzilla vs. Mothra 1972. All of the Heisei Era kaiju that came back from the Showa era got a massive overhaul in designs, with some of them being the most iconic look for that character. Yeah, Mothra didn't really get that treatment. Instead, they decided to make her as cute and fluffy as possible. Because of that, her animatronic puppet looks stiff and lifeless. The only noteworthy thing to mention is that she's given a new attack to fit with the Heisei Beam Wars, where she can shoot lasers from her antenna. While sporting some pretty colors, this moth Mothra is easily my least favorite. Number 18. Mothra Millennium Era from Godzilla Tokyo SOS 2003 and Godzilla Final Wars 2004. Mothra from the Millennium Era is like if they made the Heisei Era, but actually good. She still has many bright colors, but her puppet is easily at its best with the wings flapping much more lifelike. I could also mention her design and role in GMK since that's also part of the Millennium series. In there she looks like a wasp, which makes sense since she has to help defend Japan with Ghidorah against an evil Godzilla. And while I like the design and all the and the color scheme, the puppet once again suffers from looking too stiff and motionless. Number 17. Hiru, aka Mecha Godzilla from the Millennium Era, from Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla 2002 and Godzilla Tokyo SOS 2003. This is my personal favorite of the Mecha Godzilla designs by a long shot. The original story of being built around the skeleton of the original Godzilla is very cool, and how the spirit of said Goji can take over Kiru, sending it on a rampage is just awesome. Plus, the design, in my opinion, combines the Showa era class, also being its own thing. It also has my favorite roar of all of them. As far as I know, people are pretty mixed on Kiru, but at least for me, he'll always be the best Mecha G. Number 16. Mothra, Showa era from Mothra vs. Godzilla 1964, Ghidorah, the three-headed monster 1964, Ebera, Horror of the Deep 1966, and Destroy All Monsters 1968. Showa Mothra didn't really have the kind of beauty that Mothra would have in later films, but in her first appearance alongside Godzilla she had a scrappy spirit and a look to match. While looking fuzzy, the puppet still looks like it can move free for the time, allowing for her action scenes to be more fluid. She does die in her first fight with Godzilla, but she does what she all has always done, keep the cycle going. Mothra was the first introduction of mysticism into the Godzilla franchise, which influenced a lot of later movies, some with Mothra and some without, but it can't be denied that the Queen of Monsters is one legendary kaiju. Number 15. Gigan from Godzilla vs. Gigan 1972 and Godzilla Final Wars 2004. A cyborg and a chicken walk into a Home Depot, and Gigan is the result of the beautifully disturbed love child that resulted from such a frisky event. Gigan might have one of the most unique and out there designs, but this only makes him all the more memorable. 
In both versions, he has his beak, wings, single red eye, hooks, and buzzsaw. But in Final Wars, to fit the over-the-top tone of the movie, he was later given chainsaw hands, which is an idea so ridiculous that you can't help but smile. Either way, the cyborg bounty hunter weapon kaiju is remembered for all the right reasons. Number 14. Female Muto from Godzilla 2014 and Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019. First of all, this entry also includes the other female Muto at the end of King of the Monsters, seeing that's almost the exact same creature, albeit with a few extra spikes. Now onto the 2014 female. The sexual dimorphism between the two is cool with the female being larger, which is similar to most insects and arachnids. She doesn't do particularly well against Godzilla on her own, and she doesn't have the same presence as the male, but she does have what most consider the best death in the MonsterVerse. <laughs> Number 13, Monster X slash Kaiser Ghidorah from Godzilla Final Wars 2004. The 50th anniversary movie for Godzilla featuring nearly every kaiju that had appeared in past films except for one seemingly important one, Ghidorah. Well, he would eventually show up, but first as Monster X, a skeletal looking kaiju that looks similar in size and shape to Final Wars Goji. After losing to Godzilla, Monster X transforms into the monstrous Kaiser Ghidorah, who then proceeds to beat the ever-living quank out of Godzilla via sucking his energy if the humans had not intervened, giving Godzilla the power boost he needed in order to win. The way Godzilla kills Kaiser is both memorable and fun as it is over the top and ridiculous. Number 12 Mecha King Ghidorah from Godzilla vs King Ghidorah 1991 <laughs> Yeah, I included Mecha King Ghidorah as its own entity. Deal with it. After losing a head in round one, the humans outfit King Ghidorah with a new mechanical appendage and the kaiju is now piloted by Emi Kano. Not doing much aside from having the final battle with Godzilla, the real role of this kaiju played a bigger part in the sequel, with the technology from the future being used to build Super Mecha Godzilla. Number 11 King Ghidorah Legendary Era Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019 I've already talked about this incarnation of Ghidorah in several videos already, so I'll try to keep this one brief. You can check out the other two videos above for more details. This is personally my favorite of Ghidorah, and the reasons for this are the design, musical score, and the three different personalities and names for the three heads, making this version more unique than past versions. A great reimagining of Godzilla's greatest enemy. We've made our way to the top 10 final kaiju of this tournament, and I wanted to say that there are a couple versions of kaiju that I left out that I will briefly mention here since I'm too lazy to create a new poll and add them in later, because of how much extra work that would cost me. Angiris Rodan and King Caesar from Godzilla Final Wars 2004. They're all present for the same battle, and despite the 3v1, they get clapped by Godzilla just like every other kaiju in the movie. Also from Final Wars, Zilla. Yeah, this is a bit of a weird one since he's listed as a non-Godzilla kaiju, so I guess he counts. His death is a great way to bury the 1998 Godzilla and show us Americans how real Godzilla looks and acts. The 1998 film doesn't deserve all the hate though, in my opinion. And the final kaiju I forgot is King Ghidorah from Giant Monsters All Out Attack 2001. This version of Ghidorah is an actual good guy, which is the first for his character as well as being the only movie in which he does so. He is smaller than Godzilla, and while the role change is nice, the size difference and serious reduction of power, as well as the puppet having a very plasticky look, make this one one of the lower ranking kaiju of the series, and easily the lowest Ghidorah in my personal opinion. But if you like him, then more power to you. Alright, now to the top 10. Number 10. Larva form from Mothra vs. Godzilla 1964, Ghidorah the Three Headed Monster 1964, Ebera Horror of the Deep 1966, Destroy All Monsters 1968, Godzilla vs. Mothra 1962, Godzilla Tokyo SOS 2003, Godzilla Final Wars 2004, and Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019. I decided to separate Mothra's larva forms from all her various adult stages just because she looks and acts about the same as a larva in every movie. While nothing extremely special and 
the design department. Her role that she plays in this stage has had many different versions and sometimes she's in her adult form while a baby is in a larva form. An iconic first stage of an iconic kaiju. Number 9. Rodan, Showa era from Godzilla Three-Headed Monster 1964, Invasion of the Astral Monster 1965, and Destroy All Monsters 1968. <laughs> The classic model of Rodan first appeared in his solo movie where there were actually two of them, a male and a female, who both died at the hands of the military on a volcano. The design of a Showa era is best described as classic and his role in the films usually involves him teaming up with Godzilla to defeat King Ghidorah. Either way, it's not really a surprise to see him this high on the list, he just can't beat the originals. Well, maybe one can. Number 8. King Ghidorah Heisei from Godzilla vs King Ghidorah 1991. <laughs> Now this is truly an awesome design for the three-headed demon. While Legendary is still my favorite in both design and personality, the update from Showa to Heisei is great, getting rid of the crazy poofball hair on each head, and the overall quality of the puppet version looks like an actual golden dragon. One nitpick that can be said is the origin story behind it. In the original, it's a three-headed space dragon that destroys the world. Pretty simple enough, right? Well in here, it's originally three cute little Doras that are put on an island that Godzilla Source was initially on when he mutated. Yeah, one of those is definitely cooler than the others. This Ghidorah is also extremely powerful, wiping the floor with Godzilla until he loses control, in which the middle head is relieved politely from his shoulders. While he does come back as technically a new kaiju with some new bells and whistles, it's still pretty cool to see him become a cyborg in a la Robocop style. Number 7 Mechagodzilla Showa Era from Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 1974 and Terror of Mechagodzilla 1975. Whoever decided to make Mechagodzilla's theme just a pure jazz music composition deserves a raise, right alongside the person responsible for the entire I Need a Hero sequence from Shrek 2. But in all seriousness, this is my favorite Showa design of any monster in the series. The tin classic space look is this Mechag. This is one of the few kaiju to actually make Godzilla bleed, and my gosh does he make him bleed. His insane weaponry and trigger-happy tendency to laugh at everything makes for some of the most spectacular craziness in the series. Originally impostering as the real Godzilla, this mecha scrapped with Angus breaking his jaw. A lot of people, including myself, even thought this was why Godzilla was the bad guy in GVK, because it was actually mecha Godzilla in disguise, but that's not what happened, although he does drive the plot of the story. I don't know what else to say other than show Mechagodzilla's one bad mofo. Number 6. Destroya from Godzilla vs. Destroya, 1995. Ever wonder what would happen if the devil had a kaiju form? Yeah, that's basically Destroya in a nutshell. On a design level, Destroya looks like the devil as the final kaiju Godzilla would fight for a while, which is a worthy opponent design. Abilities also make him a significant threat with the oxygen beam, his horn, wings, and gripping claw tail. The connection to the first movie as the Oxygen Destroyer, the weapon that killed the first Godzilla, is actually responsible for mutating a colony of microorganisms, which continue to mutate until they have eventually turned into the final iconic form of Destroyer. Personality-wise, Destroyer is just pure evil, as he swipes up Godzilla Jr. and drops him into a building, killing him. And while Godzilla isn't technically the cause of death for Destroyer, it's still cool to see the big guy help take down one less kaiju before his emotional meltdown. Top 5 Kaiju, the big boys and girls that have outcompeted all the others to make it this far. So let's wrap this up. Number 5 Mechagodzilla Legendary Era from Godzilla vs Kong 2021 Everyone figured that in Godzilla vs Kong, there would be a third titan that would act as the villain that the two would team up against, and the three most likely candidates were Destroya, Mecha King Ghidorah, and Mecha Godzilla. Destroya seemed like the most realistic option, especially since the Oxygen Destroyer was used in the King of the Monsters movie, but then some official toy pictures were leaked revealing the big bad Mecha Godzilla. Many people, including myself, had mixed feelings toward this. On one hand, it's cool to see Mechagodzilla, but on the other hand, the technology in the universe isn't really advanced enough to be realistic. Whereas Mecha, G Me Whereas Mecha G wasn't even the most ridiculous piece of technology in that movie. Anyways, Mechagodzilla was made by Apex, using the remaining Ghidorah skull, specifically Kevin. The design is solid, but he never felt like Mechagodzilla to me. Especially since he didn't have any finger missiles, which bumped me out, but he was still cool. 
Abilities included missiles, proton scream, atomic punches, and kicks. It is definitely interesting seeing him be a mostly melee fighter, especially in the past incarnations, he's a long range specialist. Overall, he's a cool addition to the MonsterVerse and a pretty epic death at the hands of Kong. <laughs> Number 4, Mothra, Legendary Era, from Godzilla, King of the Monsters, 2019. Similar to the other legendary incarnations of past kaijus, I've talked about Mothra in great lengths on this channel, so I'll keep it brief. Similar to the others, this version of Mothra is my favorite, once again due to the design and the new rendition of her theme once again due to Bear Makiri. She's like a combination of Mothra from GMK and the Heisei area. She has the attributes from several different types of insects, including praying mantis limbs and a wasp stinger. Yet she still retains that beauty that gives her the title of Queen of the Monsters. Overall, she steals any scene she's in with the little screen time that she has, and actually has one of the more emotional moments in the series. Godspeed, Mothra, and may we see you in a future Monsterverse movie. Number 3. Biolanti from Godzilla vs. Biolanti, 1989. Well, if you're looking for the answer for who my favorite non Godzilla kaiju is, then Biolanti is the answer you've been searching for. First, the background behind Biolanti. Then, Tashino Kosobe was the winner of a story writing contest for a sequel to Return of Godzilla. In developing the character, Kashobi went in mind how he would feel if his daughter died, and combined this with a mental image he had of Godzilla being consumed by a flower. The design of Violante is probably one of, if not the most creative kaiju in the franchise, since the traditional suitmation for previous monsters considered of a person inside a suit and a bipedal kaiju being created to accompany this. However, the studio found it impossible to match traditional situations to the design of the creature, so they made a whole puppet to match the design, being one of the largest kaijus on screen. Violante looks like you took a plant from the little shop of horrors and combined it with the head of a crocodile and add some boar tusks onto it. Her rose form is a huge beanstalk with a massive rose and vines which change to have heads with sharp teeth that bite and wrap around Godzilla. She also contains an acidic spray. In the story of the film, she is a biological clone hybrid mutation of Godzilla, rose cells, and the DNA of a human. Dr. Jinshiro Shirime attempts to use the monster cell to genetically enhance various species of plants to create crops resistant to harsh weather. His attempts are initially thwarted with when a bomb destroys his laboratory and kills his daughter Erika. Shimurari splices her DNA with that of a rose, which is nearly destroyed five years later by an earthquake. Hoping to make the rose immortal, he further splices its DNA with those of Godzilla, resulting in the creation of a hybrid mutant he christens Biolante. Not only does Biolante have an awesome, unique design, she also has one of the deeper themes in the franchise, that being tampering with genetic power and the ethics of doing such. All in all, I'm glad to see that my favorite kaiju is so beloved by so many other fans as well. Number 2. Rodan Heisei era slash fire Rodan from Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 1993. Of all the kaiju that have surprised me in the ranking for this list, Heisei Rodan is probably the most surprising of them all. Don't get me wrong, Rodan is cool, especially this one, but number two? Eh, you voted and Vire Rodan got the second highest spot out of all these other kaiju. Rodan does play an important role in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. In the film, he initially starts off as a normal mutated Pteranodon that fights Godzilla and goes about as well as you'd expect for him. Later, he comes back as Godzilla Jr. Sings too. However, when he is arrived, he is somehow given a couple upgrades, including a much redder coloring as well as a new energy beam attack, something that is exclusive to this Rodan. Because of the singing of Godzilla Jr., Rodan believes that he is his brother and kidnaps him to take care of him. Meanwhile, Mechagodzilla is deployed to fight Rodan, who does better than he did against Godzilla, but is in incapacitated by Mechagodzilla. Later, after Mechagodzilla destroys Godzilla's second brain, a wounded Rodan flies over but is shot down by a rainbow breath and lands on Godzilla, dying. His spirit is then absorbed by Godzilla, resurrecting him and granting him a new ability that will later be seen in other films, the Red Spiral Ray. With this new power, Godzilla destroyed Mechagodzilla and adopts Godzilla Jr. as his son, bro. Design-wise, the animatronic puppet is well done. I like how he looks like a normal pteranodon, but kaijuified. Of the practical Rodan, I thoroughly enjoyed this one. And finally, number one. According to you, the community, 
the most popular non-Godzilla kaiju in the franchise is... Number 1. Space Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, 1994. It's kind of funny how in a competition that didn't have Godzilla in it, three out of the five top clones are variations of Godzilla. Space Godzilla's origins are left ambiguous, but it is often theorized that it was born through Godzilla's cells, transported in space either by Mothra or Biollante spores, being exposed to the radiation of a black hole. Space Godzilla heads for Earth and traps little Godzilla in a crystalline prison. I don't know why, but my guess is that it's the kaiju incarnation of Kevin Spacey. Then he travels to Fukanda and forms a crystal fortress which drains the city of power, channels it through the Fukanda Tower and transfers it to Space Godzilla. It is ultimately stopped through the combined efforts of Godzilla and Mogera. Space Godzilla pretty much looks like regular Godzilla, but if you put big crystals on each shoulder and boom, Space Godzilla. Okay, he's got a couple other differences aside from that. Space Godzilla also has some tusks as well as small crystals at the end of the tail. Abilities wise, these two are very different. Space Godzilla fires a similarly looking electrical attack to Ghidorah, as well as the powers of flight, telekinesis, force fields, crystal shields, crystal towers, and crystal fortress. Space Godzilla has some cool abilities for sure, but his design is lacking, especially when you see some of his alternative designs, which are reminiscent of Biolanthus off of the design. But for an evil space clone of a classic character, he's a solid choice. Well, that's all the non-Godzilla kaiju in this entire franchise, and I can definitely say that some of the entries were expected, while some were lower than I thought and others were much higher than I expected. And you may disagree with where you would place them, but that's what the community voted, so. But I want to hear your favorite and least favorite kaiju from the franchise that isn't Godzilla, and who knows, if this video does well, then I'll do something like this for other categories, maybe even ranking every version of Godzilla if this video does well. Well, that's all. Have a great day. Spank that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. So, take care.